Hey guys, it's Corinne here from It's So Corinne. And for today's tutorial, we will be making the Quilted Star Christmas Ornament. This one, right here. Now, before we begin this video, be sure to like this video and subscribe right here to the It's So Corinne YouTube channel so you get alerts when I make new videos just like these. Now, if you would like to see written instructions with pictures on how to do the Quilted Star Christmas Ornament and you would like to snag the free pattern for this ornament, be sure to head on over to my blog at It's So Corinne. Now, I'll add the link down here in the summary box and I'll also add a list of all the materials we used for this ornament. Now, to make this ornament, you are going to need some supplies. The first thing that you need is a 3-inch foam ball. Now this one is pretty solid on the outside. There's some that are more like, I don't know how to describe them, like flaky, and those do not work very well. So you wanna make sure it's a pretty firm foam ball that you are using. Next, we are going to be using pearlized pens, and that is for, to add our hanging, I don't know if you can tell, to add your hanging ribbon at the end. See, they're right here can't see but they're right here and they're super cute and then next you are going to need dressmaker pens um, these are a number 17 1 and 1 16th inch straight pen and you're going to need a lot of them like this right here is not enough that's why I bought another container right here so that way you make sure that we don't run out during this project and then next this is optional but I use a thimble to push in the pins. Otherwise, it just kills the tip of my fingers. So this is a totally optional step, but as you can see, um, I use the thimble a lot because the top is all messed up. So use a thimble if you want to save the tips of your fingers. And then, of course, you are going to need quilting cotton in whatever colors you have chosen. I have already cut these out using the pattern from my blog at itsocorini.com. And um, I have already cut them out but um, you can use three colors like I am doing, or you could do two colors, you can do one color. It is totally your preference. But what I love about this ornament is that you can change um, the colors up and make something totally different, totally new. You can make it Christmassy, you can make a Captain America one, you could do a Marvel one. I mean, you could go crazy and do anything you want. And obviously, today's ornament is going to be Americana, AKA Texas colors, red, white, and blue. So we are going to need that. And then you are going to need 5 eighths inch ribbon. And you can use any type of ribbon that is 5 eighths inch that matches your colors. Um, mine just happens to be super shiny and kind of sheer, but you could use a solid color as well. I just happen to really like metallics in everything. And then lastly, you are going to need some upholstery tacks. You're gonna need two of these. And those are to be put into the center. Now, some people don't like to put them in the center and they just leave it open, which is totally your preference. You can do that, but I like to um, add the upholstery tacks because I feel like it adds a little bit of bling. So, once you have gathered your supplies, we are ready to begin your Christmas ornament. Before we start the Quilted Star Christmas ornament, you must first um, cut out your squares in the fabric that you have chosen. Now, for the center, um, in the first section of your ornament, you will be cutting eight squares for the actual ornament and then two squares to cover up the foam ball so that way it doesn't come through when we first start. And then you will cut 16 squares for the layer two and then 16 squares for layer three. So once you have cut out your squares, you can put those aside and just put layer one right here because that's going to be the first one we use and then you need to grab your foam ball and now as you can tell my foam ball actually has a center and you can see the line right here where it shows you the center this way and then mine actually has a it's like an impression i think it's where the mold hold, held it but we are going to use that to mark center if your foam ball doesn't have that you could always measure where center is but luckily I do have it, so I'm going to use it. And so what we're going to do for the first side, we're going to do all of our squares, whatever, and we're going to end up right here at this line. So what you want to do is obviously mark your center, and then you want to get your first square that you cut out to cover the ball. Now, 
as you can tell this is not a full square but I ran out of fabric and I really didn't want to buy more fabric so I'm using a baby piece and hoping that it works so what I did is I just shoved it in the middle I got dog hair all over this oh my goodness my puppy's fur is everywhere okay so you're going to mark the center just like that and then what we're going to do is we're going to pin down this first piece just at every four corner and you just want to pull it a little bit tight it doesn't have to be perfect because all this is doing is protecting us from seeing the foam ball once we add our triangles in the next step okay so you're gonna do is just push those down and like I already said I use a thimble because it kills the tips of my fingers if you have super tough fingers then go for pushing it in yourself so what you're gonna do is you're gonna take one of the first squares and you're going to fold this in half and you're gonna finger press it then you're gonna fold it in half again like that and finger press it now you can press it with iron but I never do I just finger press it okay and then you're gonna open it up you're going to put a needle right in the center of those two creases and I know it's hard to tell on the camera but if I folded this back up you can see that my needle is right there in the center okay and what we're going to do is we are going to take this and we're going to put it right in the center where we have that that needle I'm just going to take that out I'm going to push that down and take our thimble and you can push it down open or close I always do it closed I think it's just a habit I don't think either way is right or wrong okay and then you're going to fold this side down and pin it down here and then you're going to take this side and you're going to pin it down here and see if it looks straight I think it looks pretty straight okay so we're going to push those down and then I just leave these sides open right now because I feel like um, if you pin them now and you pin them every time I'm sorry my ball keeps rolling I'm gonna take the lid to hold it um, I wait until I put all four on and then I pin these down to reduce bulk because I don't want to put a pin every single time because then the ball ends up being super heavy and and then nobody wants that and it makes it more difficult um, when you add the next layer so we're going to do the same thing with the next one and do we're going to put this across from it put it right there at the center right across from it I'm going to push that down and then we're going to do the same thing we're going to fold this guy notice as I'm doing this I turn the ball a lot so I can get a better grip on it as I'm doing it and then you want to make sure it does look pretty straight and I think it looks pretty good now I'm not OCD about perfection on these things I feel like the part of the charm of something that's handmade is that it's unique and especially something like this I don't think that it needs to be perfect so I just eyeball it a lot of times okay and once you have those two on you're gonna put the third one on and you're gonna put it right right there because we are forming the center well, the center star essentially okay my fabric went a little wonky And as you're doing this, if you don't like the way that it's positioned and it's turning out, then just un undo the pins and put it back in. Okay, so now we have three. We're going to go to the fourth one. It's the last one of round one. 
So I'm going to put these other red ones aside because that's for our other side. So put this one in. And this goes right here, right in the center, just like the others. Okay, and then we're going to fold this one down as well. Okay, and as you can see, we have all four done. And so now I'm just going to put one of these little legs underneath and then just put one pin in them. So that way they're pinned down and they're out of our way for the next round. But we don't have to worry about two pins, the bulkiness and accidentally hitting them because trust me, I have hit a, a pin in the next layer trying to put it on and it like bent all my pens up. It was horrible. Okay. So once you've added all four of those, the first layer is finished. For the second layer, you want to take your second color and you want to fold it just like you did before. Fold it in half and then fold that in half. And then you're going to add a pen to the center just like we did. And then we are going to find a half inch down from the cent from the tip of the layer one. Ooh, see if my hands can do this, which is like right here. Now, again, you don't have to measure. If you just want to eyeball it, then go for it. I'm not a huge fan of measuring for the ornaments. But if you want to measure, you want to, you know, the people that prefer hard and fast rules, which is fine, um, you can measure a half an inch. I usually just use my fingers to measure, but whatever way you want, it's fine. So we're going to do the same thing. You're going to put it right into that line, and then we're going to fold this down and pin it at the bottom, and then fold your other side. And pin that down and just like before we are going to leave these flaps open and so what we're going to do is just repeat that we're going to repeat it on this one this one and this one so you're going to put a triangle or a pyramid shape right on top of each um, triangle from the previous round once you get all four of your triangles put on, you want to do just like we did before, and you want to pin down their ends. Just tuck one underneath the other, and then pin it. But you don't want to put your pins too far down, because if you do, we might run into problems later when we do the other side, because they're going to start overlapping at one point. Oh lord, that one doesn't want to go in. That one's being stubborn. Okay. This is why I use a thimble. <laughs> Sometimes it does not want to go in. Okay. And once we get these in, we can start the second phase of round two. Oops, that was two needles. Oh, snap. Okay. So, the second phase of round two is to take... The layer two, we're in the same color for layer two. I remember it's gonna be 16 total of layer two. So there's more in layer two than there is in layer one. Okay, so you're gonna take the next one and then you are going to do the same thing, but in the ditch between the triangles. See where it looks like a flower? So you're going to measure a half an inch from the center down I just I literally use my fingers and then we are going to do the exact same thing you're going to 
fold your square into a triangle and then you're going to bring it down and then you can see how it's starting to make the star point so and then you're just going to repeat that for the other three spots you're going to put I can't talk and push pins in obviously <laughs> You're going to put a triangle into this little ditch, this ditch, and this ditch. Once you have added the last four um, triangles on layer two and you've pinned down their little arms, we are ready to move on to layer three. So grab your layer three color and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to fold it in half and then fold it in half again. And this process is going to seem super familiar because it is the exact same process for all three layers. And layer two and three is done exactly the same way. That's why I love this ornament because I can make it while I'm watching TV and because it is not super difficult. Now for layer three, we are going to put our first triangles on the bottom layer of layer two. So you can see this one, this one, this one, and this one is the bottom layer of layer two. So that's where we want to start. So you just want to go down a half an inch, neither measure or eyeball it, and then we're going to put that in. And then we're going to fold it just like the other two layers. Well, for some reason, I'm having trouble with this one. Here we go. We're gonna fold it down. And every time you fold it, you wanna make sure that the lines, that they're not overlapping each other. They want them, you want them to be side by side. I think my square is a little wonky, but that's okay. So we're just gonna pin that down. Okay, and then we're going to add three more. You're gonna add one here, here, and here to the bottom layer of layer three. After you have added your four triangles to the bottom layer of layer three, we need to add the four triangles for um, the top layer. So you're going to once again just fold your square, fold it again, add your needle to the center, and just like before, ooh, if I can grab a needle, my fingers do not want to work today. Grab your needle and then <laughs> grab your rolling ornament. And then once again, just go in the center of this triangle a half an inch down. That's about a half an inch, yeah. And then you're gonna push that down. Push your needle down. And then you're going to fold just like you did before. And it is literally, guys, the same exact process that we've done on every other triangle. And you're just gonna pin that down. And you're going to repeat the process three more times for the top layer of layer three. So let's see, you're just going to add the other three. One, two, three. After you have finished the last three of the top layer for layer three, um, this side is done. Yay you! Now we need to go to this side, which is empty. Dun, dun, dun. So we need to fill this side. So what you need to do is you need to find the center. I usually, I know, you'll be shocked to hear. Eyeball this and see, I like to put a needle here and then a needle in the middle and see if they look censored or not. And that doesn't look very censored. This one's going a little wonky anyways. But, um, and then I play around with it. I think this is the center maybe and then you want to start and you would just repeat the exact same processes that we did before now a word of caution when you're starting your first triangles here you want to look at the bottom layer of the other side which is this side because you can tell that these are bottom and these are the top and your first um, triangle needs to be going the same direction so that way when we're finished these will be lined up now if they don't line up evenly at the end it's not a big deal you are probably the only person that's going to ever notice no one will call it out but if you are OCD um, 
or just prefer things to line up really well, then you want to make sure that you line up the bottom layers when you're starting the second side. And as you can see here, that is what I did. So you just need to pay attention to that and just repeat the steps to finish this side. Once you have finished your second side, it is time to add your ribbon. Now you want to take your ribbon and pin it with just regular straight pins and then you want to run it around your ball and see if you have any uh, pins showing or if you have any um, salvage from the um, triangles that you need to cut off. And so now is the time to move pins, trim this up right here if you need to. And don't think that mine is perfect because it's not because I had to move some pins and I had to trim it up um, because they just end up kind of wonky at the end. And so you just want to make sure that you clean that line up. And then you put your ribbon on and you want to pull kind of tight. And what you're going to do is I like to put my center like where the ball is going to hang right on top of one of the lines like right here because I think it looks more symmetrical. So what you're going to do is fold back your ribbon like, I don't know if you can tell, but it's folded. Yeah, see? And then um, you want to cut your ribbon seven and a half inches long, which is your loop. And then you're going to slip that underneath that folded piece. And then you're gonna try and hold it all with your finger. And without catching your finger, shove one of your pearlized pens into the back. Aha. Into the back right here. And then you wanna shove another one into the front and because I liked odd numbers I like to put three so I put one in the center as well so you got three little pearls holding it on right there and so there you got your hanging loop super cute and you have your ribbon to cover your ugly edges super cute so all that's left to do is add pearlized pens to the side that side and that side oops that's a little crooked and then the bottom now you can use hot glue to put your ribbon on that is totally a personal preference I personally don't like because I use um, I use sheer ribbon and that's metallic and the um, hot glue tends to come through it and then make weird whiteness on there so I don't do that okay so now your ribbon is ready for hanging, super cute. And then the last thing we need to do is to put in our upholstery tacks, or you could even use a pearlized pen for this. You don't have to use upholstery tacks. You can use anything cute, or you can just leave the middle empty. Um, it's really a personal preference. I just like extra jewelry on my ornaments. So there you go. It is all complete. Your quilt to star ornament is ready to give or to hang on your Christmas tree. So if you liked this tutorial, be sure to like the video and subscribe to the It's So Corny YouTube channel so that we get notified of future videos. And be sure to come and visit me at my blog at itssocorny.com.